You're listening to Mentoring Developers. Question is, now you need to hire more people because you have more work that you can handle. What, um, how do you say, how do you list the qualifications? How do you come up with the list? And how do you communicate the list of what the, those new people need to have? What are those qualifications? What comes to your mind, Jeff? Um, that's a great, uh, that's a great question. Um, I will say for me, uh, it's easy, it's easy to start with the tech stack, you know, that's an easy spot. But to me, the things that jump out are the things that the qualifications that I look for that to me would make, uh, a great team working experience. And that is, um, emphasis on, uh, being and these these are things I'm going to say them, but they're things that I often read in a job post, and you're like, oh, okay, um, they, they seem like fluff in a lot of cases, but truthfully, they really are core components and things that you do want to assess as you're sort of meeting someone. But um, things like uh, the ability to to schedule and manage their own uh, their own work, uh, the ability to um, sort of manage a project from from either side of it. You look for that, the knowledge of, of just understanding a bigger system as a whole and just communication as well is such a, is a critical point. Um, and that's not just being able to read and write well, it's, um, being able to come to you with a problem and being able to come ahead of when that problem is a bigger issue. You, a lot of times in job posting, see a lot of that teased out into, you know, like great team spirit, uh, you know, uh, effective communicator. And it's, I, I go back and forth whether I think that's, you know, almost corny to have and list, but it's like, yeah, those are the things I'm looking, you're looking for. You know, those are really something that goes beyond like, I'm a great engineer. Those are things that go, I'm going to make a great team. The question is, how do you communicate that? So one way of doing that is to just list it in a job description. But like you said, when people look at that job description, they completely ignore that because it's first of all, it's hard to judge. And, and if you really want a job, you can say, sure. And all yeah. these questions, <laughs> I can say, yes, I'm a great team person. Yeah, I'm a great communicator. You know, so the question is, how do you communicate that so that you attract the attention of the right people, right? Do you, is that, because you can obviously put a job ad out there and you can try to, you can tr list it. And for example, I, I can do it two ways. I can say, let me just list it out. Mm -hmm. Or I can make some, add some copy, some text to the job description that attracts those people. Because, you know, let's say that I want somebody who, who can communicate really well, uh, especially the written written communication part. So I write the top job description in really good copy. So mm -hmm. they, they look at it, they're attracted by it. They're like, wow, I want to talk to the person who wrote that copy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. That's another way of doing it. That's a, a little bit more thoughtful. That's kind of my way of doing it. But of course, my way of doing things are always harder. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think, Ed? Yeah, well, I mean, it, no, I mean, this is a great point. I mean, I, I think sometimes, I mean, this is a kind of a bit of a non-answer, so I'll just tell you that in advance. But it's just that a job description in itself, as you mentioned, it's like it, it it's extremely difficult to make that, you know, the primary, you know, conduit to getting a good person onto your team, you know, because in some ways I often end up talking to folks about this, where it's like people talk about hiring for roles, but you're always hiring a human being, you know, so it's a person. So the notion of what you can really describe on paper in terms of saying like, well, this is the type of human we want to show up. It, it, you, you almost can't do that, you know, in some ways, whereas it's like you have to have a bit of a, you know, an exposure, you know, person, person, you know, out of this type of thing, like either a trade group or people just know the company, they know people of people, you know, all that, where if you're solely relying on the job description, and I, and I know that's not the argument you're making, but, but to make a job description be that definitive and that, you know, evocative of the type of person you want to hire, that may be a somewhat impossible task. I mean, you did bring up, I think, one good point, or at least I inferred it, is, is that, you know, writing it well, you know, and grammatical you know, and all that type of stuff does begin to start connoting certain virtues and values of your company. But, but you know, say, for instance, with Jeff, like at Microsoft and within his individual team and being in Seattle, it's just like, I'm not surprised if he doesn't, you know, have a couple people on deck that he'd be like, oh, you know, this would be a great person, you know, that I possibly met at some other context. It'd be wonderful to have on my team, you know. 
also as well as you, Arsalan, with your experiences is that you kind of always have an aspect of like kind of getting the band back together, you know, sometimes when you know some good folks. And uh, often, like I know when, when I've done hiring is, is that that uh, it's not always determinative, but one of the first things I do is I ask the people that I know and care about and respect who they have on deck and then possibility, you know, you can begin to start kind of working that grapevine a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. So you need to communicate. So the, the here's the thing. You have a need for a person. That's very hard to pinpoint what that person is, but you have an idea of what what you need, what type of person you need in your team. And you know that person is out there. But that person, because he's valuable or she is valuable Mm -hmm. and they bring a lot to the table, they're also in demand. So they're not really looking for you. You need to make them aware that you exist and you are a great place for them. That's the communication gap that we have. So one way of doing that would be to put job ads, but those people may not be looking at job ads because they're they're well paid and they're probably doing well. So then the other approach that you mentioned was to reach them through their colleagues, which is obviously the preferred method for a lot of uh, companies, which is great. So you need to now reach the people that they know and convey this message in a way that's not salesy, right? Where you want to show them this is a, you are a fantastic place to work for somebody exactly like them. And you mm-hmm. know their friends and their friends will mention it, hopefully. And then you'll have, you'll have a handful of candidates, not going to have a lot. And then you, it's your job now to impress upon them that you are the right place. So it's actually the, it's a, it's a reversed process where well, you need to convince them that they should pick you instead of the other way around. But when somebody applies to your job, then they're trying to convince you that they're good. And generally, that's that puts you in a position of strength. But in this other way where you get referrals, it puts them in the position of strength. Mm-hmm. And and that means if that happened, then you can say safely that generally speaking, the quality of the candidates you're going to get are, are going to be way higher. But then there's the onus is is definitely on the hiring company. Thank you so much for listening. For show notes and transcripts, visit us at mentoringdevelopers.com.